going on everybody it is march 15th thursday and we've got a pretty giant slate tonight um was it nine games yeah nine games a uh, bunch of good games pacers raptors should be good uh, rockets clippers is obviously fun um grizzlies bulls is sort of like the opposite of that uh, Spurs Pelicans should be interesting. Spurs fighting for a playoff spot, which you don't normally talk about. I basically haven't talked about that since I was a child. Um, Blazers Cavs should be good. So, yeah, it should be a pretty fun night. Um, no live stream for me tonight. I'm going to be cooking dinner for the wife. She got home last night. And I uh, didn't have a chance to make her a birthday dinner because she didn't get through the door till 10 o'clock. So, i got to do my husbandly duties. Um... But we'll do a live stream Friday night. I think that'll be best. Uh, so let's just get into this right away. Nine games. That's a lot to talk about. First up. Oh, every one of these lines is actually legitimate. Which is the exact opposite of yesterday. Uh, Pacers hosting the Raptors. 105 implied total for the Pacers. They are three-point underdogs at home. Uh, they have the 15th highest implied total. You know, not a ton to want to target here, uh, particularly on a nine game slate. Uh, you know, Raptors exceptional on defense. Oh yeah, I wanted to try to, yeah, it's not important right now. Um, so from a matchup perspective, only position that has anything resembling something decent would be, I'm highlighting the, yeah, no, that's right, uh, would be point guard. So what has Toronto done uh, defending point guards? Six big games, five duds, four monsters. Okay, so it's it's a little high risk, high reward. I can handle that. Um, 18th against shooting guards, though, which is kind of scary. Dead last matchup for shooting guards. Nine duds. Doesn't make me like Oladipo that much, but 8,800 uh, prices come down dramatically. Um, I mean, he was at like 9,900 two or three games ago, right? Where's he hiding? Yeah, 9,900 on March 9th, up in the tens, you know, at the beginning part of the month. So getting him down to 8,800 is interesting. I assume that they brought him down just for this. Uh, he would need close to 45. I mean, that's going to be tough sledding against the Raptors. It's not a place I would want to focus, um, but I could understand wanting to try to take advantage of uh, that cheaper price point for him. I mean, really, there's not a ton that's super desirable here. Uh, I think Miles Turner at 6,800 is definitely worth a look. Um, Raptors haven't been that crazy. Uh, they're, you know, middle of the pack against centers. Uh, Turner's good. Uh, I think he's a, a difficult matchup for someone like Jonas. So I could see it being a decent game for Turner. But ultimately, I, I, I think you're, it's a little difficult. The only, the only real upside for the Pacers is that it's a game that both teams want. So there's not going to be any, like, you know, tanking garbage going on in this. Um, so, yeah, I think the only guy that I would, would truly focus on here would be Turner. Um, I'll probably have a small amount of Oladipo because of the price point. And then, um, you know, this doesn't strike me as the type of game for Boyan. Raptors really take away the three. Uh, Corey Joseph and Darren Collison is going to be a little tricky. Not much interest in that. So, yeah, uh, basically just Turner for me here. Uh, no Sabonis. Uh, Trevor Booker should get some extra minutes. Uh, I guess he could probably be some sort of GPP flyer, but it's mostly going to go to Al Jefferson in my opinion, and um, I don't really see anything that I would want in, like, the Pacers second unit. So Raptors, 108.5 implied total, 3.5 point favorites, uh, ninth highest implied total. Um, bad, bad matchup for Kyle Lowry. Uh, Pacers are um, really good defending the point guard position. Uh, you'll see Lowry coming in dead last 
10 duds. Uh, so that's a little scary. I'm going to go ahead and knock him down right now. He's just not somebody I want to really end up with much of. Um, which is a shame because of the amount of threes that he takes. It kind of, you know, fits in line with the Pacers. But at the same time, you know, that's they've created some really bad games. I'd like to see how he's done uh, so far this year. I'm sure they've played a couple times. So we went went hard in November and had a dud in December. I haven't played since then. Nothing really to look into there. Uh, DeRozan at 7,800 is... I, I don't know about you guys, but that's pretty desirable to me. They haven't been crazy against uh, shooting guards. Six big games, four monsters, hardly any duds. Uh, DeRozan under 8,000 is always appealing. Um, if he's feeling himself from three, you know, you'd like to see him take a couple. He's certainly going to be taking them above the break. Um, he's been cold lately, too. 25, 20, 31. Uh, coming off that 54-point game on the 7th, which was how many overtimes? Just one. Um... I don't have an issue going with uh, DeRozan tonight. I don't think that he'll be very popular, and I think that he's in a position that he could actually provide some value at that number. Like I said, don't have a ton of interest in Kyle Lowry, and then the rest of this is just sort of middle-of-the-pack type stuff. Um, you know, you could talk me into Surge and a GPP. That's probably the extent of it, um, and that's really only just a matchup-based thing. Uh, their mid Pacers have been middle of the pack against power forwards, you know, using the five by five numbers. So, you know, Serge likes to shoot some threes. Sometimes you need to bet on that. Um, I don't expect Toronto to be a particular this game in general to be a very uh, highly owned affair. So, um, you might be able to squeeze some value out of somebody like DeRozan or maybe Serge. I think they stack well together, or maybe I'm thinking of Lowry and Surge. Let me check. Uh, Rosen. Yeah, very highly. I'm basically, the only guy that does stack really well with uh, DeRozan. So. Yeah, I think that could be a, a sneaky GPP uh, stack, you know, some sort of DeRozan Abaca thing. It's not going to be highly owned, so you'll be pretty unique there. Now, uh, rivalry game, Hawks and Hornets. I don't know, they're just close to each other. Uh, Hawks are four and a half point underdogs at home uh, against the Hornets. 107.75 implied total is 11th. And, uh, you know, matchup isn't really the best for the Hawks. Not that anybody's really caring. Um, it's tough sledding for... That's the second time I've said that. Got to work that one out. Shooting guard and power forward have not had the best of goes at it. Goes at it? Oh, it's going to be one of those days. How about we just look at the players? Like Schroeder, 6,600 for Andul, 6,200 DK. Got 33 minutes in his last game, put up 31 fantasy points. I'm not terribly worried about defense, but that $6,200 number is nice. Um, you know, no issues there. Uh, no real issues with John Collins. Prices on uh, DraftKings for Atlanta look pretty good. I feel like they're trying to steer you that direction. Like... Dwayne Dedman for 4700 on DK is a really nice price. You don't get that same sort of ability on FanDuel because you can't roster more than one center, but on DraftKings, that's a really decent way to, to provide some value. Um, man, it's a tricky one. I don't like having a ton of, you know, these tanktastic teams, uh, the Awful Eight or whatever they're being called in... Uh, in Ziller's morning email blurb, but 
Yeah, like I wouldn't mind funneling in Schroeder, Collins, Deadman on DK. <sighs> Isaiah Taylor, not, I don't think there's any upside there. Um, how do Schroeder and Collins get together? <laughs> Sorry for the sniffle, guys. Still getting through it. Uh, I feel a lot better this morning. Hoping that I can just breathe a little bit more today. So Shooter and Collins. Yeah, the, the decent stack there, I think. Another one where, you know, people might not be uh, owning them all that much. Um, I wouldn't have any problem having Shooter and Collins. Uh, Shooter and Deadman go well together. So let's see uh, how Collins and Deadmans get together. I, I would guess that it's not. It's probably relatively neutral. Kind of negative. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there are options there for Atlanta. Nothing out of this world. Um, Shooter's B-plus is probably a little aggressive, you know, very much based on his career. Doesn't really take into account, uh, you know, the fear of tanking. So something to keep in mind there. Hornets won 12.25. Implied total is fifth. Uh, they obviously have an incredible matchup against Atlanta, who's not very good. Um, small forward in particular is the best spot, but no one is really um, scary. So let's think about this here. Actually, let me look at one thing. Yeah, we're good. So Kemba grading out with the A minus, A minus, uh, more than okay with that. I mean, he's got the Hawks, and he should be in a position to fill up the stat sheet. Hasn't had a 40-point game in his last four. This seems like the perfect remedy for that. I'm going to be pretty heavy on uh, Kemba tonight. I see no reason not to be. Um, got to take advantage of these tank teams. Charlotte's still trying for some strange reason. What are their current playoff odds at? You know, they have no chance, but it doesn't appear to, that they're tanking. So thanks, MJ, for that. Man. If the Spurs don't make the playoffs, it's going to be nuts. Anyway, uh, Batum came off 42 minutes, 57. Back-to-back 50-point -back fantasy games. Kind of nuts for him. Uh, I don't see that continuing. Um I think he's an okay play, uh, but to think that he's going to run it up into the 50s again would be a bit of a reach to me. Yeah, I just I can't see him getting there. I'm, I'm okay with playing him, but I, I greatly prefer Walker. Uh, Dwight, in his uh, one of his 600 revenge games, this is back to Atlanta, uh, 8,500. Did he eat against Atlanta or did he play like garbage? I feel like it was one or the other. He ate in one of them and played like garbage in another. Perfect. Just what I was looking for. Yeah, I, I think the grade looks fine. Um, I'm indifferent. Kaminsky, though, uh, 4,300 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK. Uh, got extra minutes in the last one, 28. Uh, Cody Zeller is still expected to be doubtful, so should still see a little bit of extra time. Um, and I think that sort of fits Kaminsky uh, pretty well here. Does most of his work either from three or in the mid-range. So I think that Kaminsky looks like a decent uh, like power forward punt for the day. I think that B grade is uh, perfectly acceptable. So I'll have a lot of Kemba. I'll funnel Frank in from time to time. Um, you know, little bits of Batum and Howard, nothing crazy. And then I probably wouldn't look any other directions here. Uh, to the Knicks. Ooh. 104 implied total is 17th. There are nine-point underdogs at home hosting the Sixers. Uh, Sixers 
terrifyingly good on D. Uh, they are second best against point guards and the best against small forwards, power forwards, and centers. So um, I'm going to go ahead and bump down some of these Knicks guys even further just so people don't accidentally end up with them. So let's take a bite out of Moutier. Let's take a bite out of Trey Burke and Frankie Smokes, who's already an F, so this is really a little redundant. Uh, only guy that I'm not going to touch is Tim Hardaway. They haven't been totally terrible against, uh, or totally amazing against shooting guards, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But I want to give Beasley a haircut. I want to give Lance Thomas a haircut. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I don't see any other Knicks. We want to give Kyle O'Quinn a haircut. And where's Cantor? We want to give Cantor a haircut. You don't want to accidentally end up with any Knicks. This is a team that's not trying to win games. Going against an exceptional defense. Sixers still need to win. Um, they're going to do everything they can to just ice these dudes. Uh... If you want to play some of these guys on the Knicks, I think they're all just GPP looks. Um, only guy that I would probably have any interest in is Tim Hardaway. Let me, let me double check and make sure I'm not missing anything crazy. Yeah, yeah barring any news, I'd, I'd entertain Tim Hardaway at 6,000 because he can he's just going to shoot, like, a lot. But... I don't want to roll the dice on Mo in large numbers at least, on Moody A or Beasley or Cantor or Burke or whoever's going to be playing. I mean, these guys are, it's just, it's a terrible matchup for a terrible team. And the less said, the better. Sixers. Uh, 113 implied total is third. Uh, pretty solid matchup. Uh, it's hard for me to take a lot of stock into the Knicks numbers just because... So much of it was with Porzingis, and he's like a big part of a defensive identity, so it really changes the team when he's not going to be on there, so I'm just going to treat them like a normal bad team. Got a sniffle, guys. Look at that. I remembered to take myself off a of mute. What a hero. Uh, I have no issues running out Ben Simmons. I think 8800 is a, is an okay price for that. Um, he hasn't been going crazy lately. He hasn't hit value at that price since, I guess, March 6th, right on the nose. Uh, but I get the feeling like Ben Simmons is going to want to go at MSG. <laughs> I wouldn't go crazy on it, just because of his lack of upside and of never shooting, but man, that's a weird one for me. He could fill the stat sheet up and they could destroy him, but I think a B is a perfectly acceptable grade for him. Uh, Bobby Covington has just been playing amazing. 33, 40, 30, 40, 33. The dude's just been hanging it up there. Um, doesn't grade out as well. It is a bit of a heater. Um, only ninth against power forwards. So that's not bad. Let's take a look a little, a little deeper. Five big games, two monsters, or two duds, one monster. <laughs> yeah, I'll have some Bobby Covington. Um, you know, I might have a little bit of Sarich, a little bit of Redick. Embiid, 9,900. 9,700 on DK. Went for 50 his last time out. Um, he's another guy that I would expect to want to put on a show at MSG. Has he played there before? Went for 50 against them earlier this year on Christmas. And the only time he's played there. 8 of 17. I'm going to bet on him shooting. Uh, plus Sixers, or Embiid, you know, loves to get to the line. Uh, Knicks aren't shy about putting people there. So I think I like Embiid the most out of anybody here. And then I'd probably have like equal amounts of Simmons and Covington. 
sprinkles of Saric and Redick. You know, there's just a lot to like for the Sixers in this matchup. Now, a matchup where we can actually talk about both teams. Uh, Rockets hosting the Clippers, 117.75 implied total. Number one for the Rockets. They're 11-point favorites at home. Um, great matchup for James Harden. Great matchup for Chris Paul. A uh, solid matchup for whoever we're going to call the power forward. Lots to like here. Uh, Harden in particular. Clippers do put people on the line. Uh, they give up threes at a pretty big clip. 11-3 for Harden on FanDuel. 11-2 for him on DK. Uh, big, big, big fan here. I think uh, I think James is in line for a big night. Um, he's one of my favorite studs. Probably my favorite stud. If I let me take a quick look at it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna end up having a lot of James Harden tonight. Uh, I can't say the same for Trevor Ariza, although on DraftKings I think that he looks pretty nice. Uh, Clippers do give up a bunch of threes, which is like the only thing that Ariza does. So uh, on the off chance that he could uh, cause a steal or two. You know, Ariza could look at a, a pretty decent stat line. Uh, Chris Paul, I mean, he's just all over the place. Uh, 8,300, 8,600 on DK. He's gone for 40 twice in his past two weeks. It's a good matchup. You know, it's 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 not like Beverly's there or Chris Paul's got to guard himself. So I don't have any problem with Paul. Um, I greatly prefer James Harden, though. Uh, Eric Gordon, completely fine to have. And again, another guy that likes to shoot threes against a team that likes to give them up. Um, I see no real, nothing scary from a defensive standpoint, so I'll, I'm happy to have Eric Gordon in, you know, a fairly normal amount of lineups. And then Clint Capella, this one's crazy. 7,400 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. Um... For someone with his upside, you know, he went for 44 two-plus weeks ago. Uh, that's a monster game at that 6,300 number. Uh, I'd, I'd very much like some Clint Capella in my life tonight. How has he done against them this year? Went for 44 uh, at the end of February, which is the game that I'm talking about. So, perfect. No problems running Capella out there. I think that price is fine. But DK, he looks like a star for the Clippers. Clippers, <clears throat> 106.75 implied total is 13th. It's a pretty tough matchup. Rockets are actually decent on D. Uh, they have given up some solid games to the shooting guard position. Surprise, surprise. Ten big games, six duds, four monsters. So if you're looking for one, that's the spot. Uh... So we've got Tobias Harris, 7,800 and 7,700. I think that's completely neutral for him. I don't, like, he can get into the 50s, but I think he's priced exactly where he should be, and that grade um, that grade shows. Uh, Austin Rivers, no thank you. Lou Will, 7,300 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. I love it. Um... I'm very willing to have a decent amount of Lou Will on FanDuel. Uh, going against Houston, he's going to want to get his. Um, he's under 8,000 and now at 7,300, which I'm, I couldn't be happier about. You know, he was 8,400 a couple nights ago and now 7,300. I'm going to have a very, very large amount of Lou Williams. Thank you, FanDuel, for allowing that price. And then DeAndre, how has he looked in these games? That's Joel Embiid, very much a different person. <laughs> uh, DeAndre was fine in the first one, and Capella ate his lunch in that other one. Uh, yeah, I don't. I'd much prefer Capella because of his price than DeAndre. Uh, DeAndre coming off the sixty-five pointer two nights ago, uh, he had fifty-one uh, a couple nights before that, so. Maybe starting to feel himself in another 54-point game on March 2nd. So I don't have any problem going with DeAndre. I just don't think it's like the sexiest play on the board. And then Teodosic at 4,100. Uh, 
needs to be talked about at least a little bit uh, in this game where it should be relatively up-tempo. Um, any little miscues on D for the Rockets, Tay Dosich could be out, you know, running, zipping passes at crazy angles. So I like the upside of him at that price. Uh, obviously, this will be a real, relatively popular game to have stacked. I don't even know if I want to type this in. Grizzlies hosting the Bulls. Somehow, the Memphis Grizzlies are favored. I got to double check that I answered that correctly. I mean, I realize that both teams are dog shit, but let me just make sure I typed that correctly. Yeah, I, I certainly did. Okay, so the Memphis Grizzlies are two-point favorites at home against the Bulls. This should be one of those situations where both teams are somehow the underdog. Um, if you could read the tea leaves on the Grizzlies, good for you. Uh, it's possible that Tyreek Evans plays. Right now he is questionable, so I have him in here right now. If he's not going to play, uh, feel free to bump up all of those other no-name dudes that have to play point guard. Yeah. Oop, I'm going to cough. Okay, let's try this again. So Marcus All should have a good game. Not a ton to be scared about on the Bulls, especially in the front court. Uh, he's been solid lately. But again, this game is a wasteland of D-League and non-NBA players. I think uh, Zach Lowe tweeted it out. It's just like Jarrell Martin taking contested 18-footers over and over again. So here's where I land on this. If you want to take anybody on the Grizzlies, go for it. There's nobody on here that I really like. If I know that Tyreek Evans is playing, I'd probably have him in some GPP lineups. Uh, I'll probably have some Marcus All in some GPP lineups. I'll have some sort of random filler of Jamichael Green or Jarrell Martin, but there's no reason to trust anything that's happening here. Uh, like, uh, they're just not good basketball players, and it's really hard to project guys that are, like, below replacement level guys. Um... Every one of the matchups should be good for Memphis. Chicago, not very good on D. Uh, but use your discretion. Um, like I said, I'd lean towards Evans and Gasol. Stick to what works. Go for the guys that are probably going to play in the NBA again next year. Um, use that as sort of a benchmark for yourself. Uh, if you don't know who he is and you're not necessarily confident he'll be in the NBA next year... Uh, Use discretion. Don't necessarily throw that guy in a ton of lineups. Let's go to the Bulls, where at least I know some of these guys. <laughs> the, gri <laughs> the Grizzlies are turning into major league. They they bring some of these dudes out, and I don't know who they are. And it's just like this guy here is dead. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, so Bulls miraculously two-point underdogs in Memphis, which should, I would really chat my ass if I were the Bulls. Um, I don't like any of it. Uh, I guess if I were going to take anybody, it would be Portis. Um... And Noah Vonley, I guess, are the only two guys I'd be interested in. Vonley at 3,600 on FanDuel, 38 on DK. Uh, if he's going to be getting minutes, that's A-OK -okay with me. So Portis and Vonley are where I would focus my energy. Um, I'll end up with, like, mild amounts of Levine or Dunn. But I just don't. I don't even like talking about it. How do you track a team that's going to play, like, that may or may not play? Like, Robin Lopez is playing 12 minutes. In three straight games, he's played 12 minutes. Justin Holiday hasn't played in his last two. He played 12 in the game before that. They've got no marking in. The only guy that I actually like on this team. You know, like Antonio Blakeney's getting 20 minutes. I don't... How do you how do you manage two teams that are both trying to lose? This, 
there's no incentive for either team here. I can't talk about it any longer. I babbled on and on too much. Now, Spurs hosting the Pelicans. Uh, Spurs are three and a half point favorites at home. Uh, desperately need this. Both teams actually desperately need this game. Really big time playoff implications here. Uh, I haven't heard any other news on Kawhi, so I'm not expecting that. Uh, I really like LaMarcus Aldridge. 8,000 on FanDuel. 8,000 on DK as well. Uh, Spurs, excellent matchup. The Pelicans have given up a ton of big games throughout the season, probably you know mostly due to pace. So I have, I'm have i going to try to have a decent amount of LaMarcus Aldridge. Um I like Murray. Uh, I'm not. I wouldn't be too worried about him against Rondo. So I, I'd be totally fine with that. Um, Kyle Anderson. I don't ever get right. So when I have him, he puts up 8.7 in 15 minutes. I don't expect this to be the type of game where Pop's gonna dick around. Um, they don't have the margin for error right now for him to be all poppy. So I would expect the better guys to be getting the serious run here. Um, I don't expect much out of Powell. I don't think he's he's in a position to be on the floor against AD. They're basically like the exact opposite person. One of which is incredibly athletic. The other one is Pau Gasol. Uh, so my focus here is going to be on Aldridge. I think that um, he's going to take it upon himself to, to try and do something big to keep this team uh, afloat, I guess is probably the best way to say it. I'm totally cool using Murray Anderson Green um, to a lesser extent, probably Rudy Gay, at least on FanDuel, uh, using some of those guys as filler. But Aldridge is my focus. That 8,000 price point is kind of nuts. How far is it, have they dropped him? Yeah, so he was 8,500 in the last game, 87 at one point, 8,900 to start the month. Uh, so getting him at a discount in a game they need against a team that's not particularly great defensively, sign me up for that. Uh, Pelicans, also very important game for them. 108 implied total, uh, three and a half point underdogs in San Antonio. We've got AD back down to 12-5. Uh, 11-5 on DK. And, you know, he's got to be on your radar at all times. <laughs> Three of the last four games that he's played have been in the 70s. Which is just amazing. Um, you know, you wouldn't expect a game against the Spurs to be a game where he would just go bananas. But Anthony Davis transcends defense, hombre. So you got to do what you got to do. Uh, I don't really find this game super appealing, though, from a Pelicans perspective. Uh, I think Drew is fine. I think Etan Moore on FanDuel is fine. Um, you know, I think Rondo is fine. Only guy that I would have in any sort of bulk would be AD, and that's just because of the fact that he can go for 85 and look like he's not even breaking a sweat. Um but it should be a really good game. Uh, I, I don't expect much uh, tomfoolery out of either of these teams. So just stick to the basics here. Uh, AD and LaMarcus Aldridge for me are my two focuses. Uh, the rest of those guys are bit players uh, just because of price and because it's a, you know, it's, the Spurs aren't exactly going to be in some run and gun matchup. This is going to be uh, a real basketball game. Nuggets hosting the Pistons. Jesus. Uh, 111.75 implied total for the Nuggets, which is sixth. Uh, solid matchup here for Murray and for Jokic, so we'll take a look there. Uh, Gary Harris, C and C+. Plus. Um, man, somebody's going to pop off for Denver here with all these threes that are going to go up. <laughs> Figuring out who that's going to be is going to be a tricky situation. I'd be fine betting on Gary Harris. You know, he went for 40 a couple nights ago. Um, seems like everybody just sort of rotates these 40-point games. But I like Gary Harris. I'm going to avoid Wilson Chandler at that price. I like Will Barton. Um, 
Jokic, I have no problem with. 9400 is a little pricey, but went for 55 twice in his last four, which is what you're going to be looking for. Um, I think that night is perfectly reasonable tonight. Uh, I think Jamal Murray is probably a little too expensive for me, even with the decent matchup. Sorry about the sniffle, guys. Let me get one good one in. There we go. Um, and I think Millsap is fine. 6,100 on DK in particular is is pretty nice. Uh, I would prioritize Gary Harris and Will Barton here. And then Jokic would be my third spot. I don't... Figuring out who's going to go off out of a Gary Harris-Will Barton combo is, is relatively difficult, in my opinion. You're looking for the same sort of things. Uh, they basically have the same shooting profile. Barton gets to the rim a little bit more. Harris settles for the mid-range a little bit more. Um, I want to have different combos of these Denver guys. Harris, Barton, Jokic, Millsap in particular. Um, nobody stands out as like exceptional, but they're going to get some threes up, and that increases uh, you know, a lot of GPP variance for me. So... I like these guys in the GPP setting. I'd be a little bit more scared in cash just because of, uh, you know, the ability for other guys to go off, comparatively speaking. And I think that Will Barton will see a little bit of an uptick in minutes uh, compared to where he's been lately. We'll go to Detroit. Pistons, 104.25 implied total is 16th. Uh, 7.5 point underdogs on the road. Their season is over. Uh, they're still playing like it's not over, though, which is great for a fantasy perspective. Um, there's only three things to look at right now, barring any news. Um, and that would be Blake and Andre. To a lesser extent, Ish Smith. Uh, Blake is 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. Uh, went for 15 in his last game, which is dreadful. Coming off of four straight 40-point games previously. Uh... I'm not worried about Denver's D at all. Um, not the best matchup for power forwards, but I think Blake uh, feels like a pretty safe matchup. So long as you're not worried about any sort of blowout affecting Blake's minutes, I think that uh, he's a pretty safe play here. Uh, I like him more in a cash scenario, oddly enough, than I do in a GPP. Then Drummond, um, he's got the best matchup on the board. Uh, centers sort of eat Denver up. Uh, 11 big games. There have been seven duds, but five monsters. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm willing to uh, hitch my wagon to Andre Drummond tonight. Uh, I'm, I'd, I'd, I'd like to have a good bit of him. 9,500 on FanDuel isn't the best price, but if you have, if you can get him on DK, like you could run out Drummond and Dwayne Dedman on DK, and I think that's an exceptional combination of using two centers. Uh, they grade out really well. And then finally, Ish. Um, only played 22 minutes in the last one. The uh, Pistons were very, very bad as a team. So if his minutes are going to bounce back up to that 30 range, which I think that they will, uh, I think that he's in a pretty, pretty interesting spot. Uh, I think that price point is a place where Ish Smith can provide some value. Uh, four straight games in the 20s, uh, so you would be you'd be looking for a little bit more out of him. Just for some reason, I think that he grades out pretty well tonight. Jazz hosting the Phoenix Suns. Uh, Jazz 12 and a half point favorites at home. Obviously, they have the best matchup on the board. The Suns are doo doo, uh, so. Be aware that there are very real concerns about a blowout. Um, Donovan Mitchell's price on DraftKings at 7,400 is absolutely amazing. Uh, he went off against the Suns earlier this year, uh, 40, 40 real points. I want to say that he had 60 uh, legit. I want to say this was, I don't know, maybe uh, late February or mid-February, something like that. So I really like Donovan Mitchell. Uh, Gobert should do absolutely everything that he would like to do. Um, I like Rubio uh, to a lesser extent. I'm still just scared of his price. 
<clears throat> when push comes to shove, he's still Rubio and he still can't shoot. Uh, I think Favors should be in line to have a game, you know, bigger than he's been having lately. It's the Suns. Everybody's in play for the Jazz. Be aware of the potential for a blowout, but I'm going to load up a lot on Mitchell and Gobert. Love them both. Um, I just want to be a part. I just want to have a lot of bites at the Suns because it's like the draft. You want to have a lot of picks. You want to have a lot of chances because it's it's tough. I want to have a lot of guys from the Jazz because some of those dudes are going to go off because the Suns suck. Mitchell and Gobert are my priorities, uh, first and foremost, though. Now for Phoenix, uh, 12 and a half point underdogs in Utah. Who knows how they're going to come out. At least they're getting a day's rest coming into altitude. Um, TJ Warren, 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. You know, the only part of this, like, I don't, I don't really like the matchup at all. You know, Utah, very good defensively. Um, I could see Booker trying to keep up with Mitchell if Mitchell's gunning. So that could be an interesting opposite side of this. But I'm finding myself uh, trying to avoid the Suns more and more because they're really tough to, you know, lock down. They, they're not very good. Um, you really need to catch them on a good night or at least catch them on a night where the opponent plays down to them. I don't expect the Jazz team to be a team that plays down to them. So I'll have a little bit of Warren and Booker. Warren's sort of always in play just because of his position. Um, other than that, you know, maybe a very small amount of Alfred Payton, but his minutes have been weird lately. I think most of Phoenix is just a stay away. If you're going to take it, go for the guys that are going to shoot the ball. Go for go for your TJ Warrens and your Devin Bookers, because they're at least going to keep trying to get theirs. And then finally, really interesting game here. Uh, Blazers hosting the Cavs. Uh, Blazers are five-point favorites at home uh, against the Cavs. Just a really unique game. Um, it's a fun late game. Should be relatively popular, uh, mostly because the Cavs are really 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 bad against uh, point guards and just anybody in general and Dame just happens to be a guy that seems like he's going to want to go hard here um, <clears throat> is this game on TV no any of these games no okay uh, I'm going to want a lot of Damian Lillard um, him and Kemba looking super duper awesome tonight, in my opinion. Uh, 9,700 for Dame is a lot, but I mean, a lot lesser people have gone for 50 against the Cavs. Dame's going to do what he wants. I'm excited to see that. Uh, I like CJ to a lesser extent, but I think he's in a great spot too. Four straight games in the, th well, six straight games, 30 or more that I can see. Um, one of those went for 50, but otherwise he's in, in and around his value number here. Super safe in my opinion. Uh, I'd be happy running out CJ and cash Dame in either game. Um, if you think this is one of those games where Nurkic plays 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK, uh, Cleveland's been absolutely dreadful against centers this year. So I would have no problem running out Nurkic. That's probably the most that I would do for this game. I find Turner and, like, you know, Aminu's fine, but you, you're, you're betting on shooting. Um, you know, there's always the random games where Ed Davis goes crazy. This could be one of those. I'd like him in a GPP for sure. Uh, but I want to have an overwhelming amount of Damian Lillard and a very solid amount of CJ McCollum. And, uh... Probably, I'd like to try to be a little overweight on Nurkic. Finally, the Cavs. Uh, Cleveland, 108.5 implied total is ninth. They are five-point underdogs in Portland. Uh, coming with a day's rest. Braun at 12-5, 11-4 on DK. 
I don't like the cross country, you know, late night brawn game in Portland, um, especially at that price point. Twelve five is a lot. Um, he's like I trust him to be solid. I wouldn't mind him in cash, but I don't see a ton of upside for him in GPPs. I'll be uh, hopefully underweight. At least that's going to be the plan. Um, Nance, though, uh, I think is in a good spot. Um, should be fine to get a full allotment of minutes here. Uh, I'll have a decent amount of him. Um, nothing crazy, but I, I think he's in a, a spot where this game sort of fits him. Um, he shouldn't have much to worry about with Nurkic. And then for the rest of the guys on the Cavs, they're just too balanced. They're all GPP only. So if you like Hill or Hood or Corver, Smith, Green, Clarkson, all those guys, um, I don't think that anybody stands out any more than anybody else. Uh, what you're betting on in those say, in those cases is getting the hot hand and being right. Um, if Hood is out, you know, it makes those guys a little bit more appealing. But right now, just too many guys that are comparable. I don't think anybody really breaks out of the pack. So let's take a look at what we get in the optimizer. I know the directions that I'm going to try to take my lineups, but let's see what pops up to start. Let's bump up randomness and let's see what a hundred look like. Ugh, that's so much Kyle Anderson. There's no way I'll do that. I can't trust him. Every time I take him, I end up being severely depressed. So I want to start with situations where I can get Dame. Are there any others with Kemba? So there's four with Kemba. All of these almost have Kyle Anderson. So it might not be possible to pull that off. There's just so much to like. But I'd be totally cool. Like, I would want to amend... I would like to get Kyle Anderson out of here. I'd probably drop down from Kyle Anderson... And up from CJ Miles to something, if I could. You know, I'd be I'd be more likely to have Rudy Gay than Anderson, I think. Um, or I could, you know, just as easily drop down from Embiid here. You know, if I did something like this and did twenty five more. How many of these don't get Embiid? Yeah, so I like that a lot more. Where do I not get Kyle Anderson? So I'd be fine with like a TJ Warren, you know, maybe Robert Covington. No, that gives me Cantor, so I'm not cool with that. You tell him more Marcus. Yeah, like so something like that, I'd be cool with. I think that all lines up really well. Uh, 293, and I'm happy with that total amount. So yeah, that would be a fun lineup for me that I would use as like a placeholder to start the day. And then we'll go to DK. I don't know why Glenn Robinson's name doesn't get recognized as Glenn Robinson in there. I don't think his dad's coming back. 10% randomness. I always love running the DK ones. I never know what it's going to look like. Stop. Close. There's no way Damian Lee should be popping up that much. Shocked. Lots of Donovan Mitchell. <sighs> Not a lot of Kemba, which kind of surprises me. Only one lineup. So, I want to start with Donovan Mitchell. I want to go with Clint Capella, because I think that price is incredible. Um, I 
Got to go with Andre Drummond, I guess, with that price. I can get to Dame. What does that lineup look like? Ends up with Bellinelli. That's a sneaky GPP lineup, at least, if you're going with Bellinelli. What if I walk back Dame? Oh, man, they're not giving me many options. So I'd probably have to go Murray. So, like, right there, I'd, I'd, be, in, I'd be in. Murray, Mitchell, Warren, Deadman, Capella... Ish, Lance, Lance. Yeah, Larry Nance is now Lance for me. Uh, and then Drummond. So I would like something like that. Alrighty, guys. That's all I got. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the day, hit me up. Um, you know, follow me on Twitter, like and subscribe. Getting close to the end for NBA. Going to be making a transition into MLB soon. Or maybe other transitions. Who knows? Uh... Best of luck tonight, and I will see you guys in the morning.